I'm the Director for Graduate Enrollment here at Alvernia University. We are super excited about your interest in our occupational therapy programs and have put together a Q&A for today. Hopefully you'll get some answers to your questions. Um, at this time, I'm going to turn it over to our department chair for the occupational therapy program to introduce herself and our faculty that are here today. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Elizabeth Bentz, and I am the chair of the occupational therapy department. I also graduated from Alvernia University in 1995, and I am excited to be back at Alvernia to be teaching full time and working with all of our wonderful students. And I will have the rest of our department introduce themselves. Dr. Schreffer, if you'd like to go next. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Judy Schrepfer, and I uh, am on the Occ Occupational Therapy faculty, and I am the program manager for the Occupational Therapy Doctorate Program. Hi, I'm uh, Dr. Kelsey Swope, and I uh, have been with Alvernia since 2021 as the Academic Fieldwork Coordinator, and also as teaching as a professor. Hi, I'm Amanda Stilianos. I am also a 2010 Alvernia graduate and have been back adjuncting since 2016 and came on as the second academic fieldwork coordinator in 2022. And I'd like to have our student introduce herself. We're very excited that she's joining us today also. Hi, my name is Ashley Martins. I am an entry level MSOT student here at Alvernia University. I'm one semester from graduating. Okay, so a big question that a lot of students do ask oftentimes, is Alvernia an accredited university? Yes, Alvernia is an accredited university and also our occupational therapy program is also accredited through the Accreditation Council on um, Occupational Therapy Education. So we are accredited program with an accredited university. Absolutely. Um, our accreditation uh, with the university is middle states. And then again, additionally, this program is accredited by the Accreditation Council of OT. What are the admissions requirements for our OT programs? We have both an entry level MSOT program as well as the OTD program. So for our entry level, we have what's called also the post -bac occupational therapy program. And that's for students who have their bachelor's degree and coming back for their occupational therapy degree. So the admissions requirements is that uh, minimum GPA of uh, 3.0, and you also need to have prerequisite courses. So that includes human anatomy and physiology with a lab, six credits, introduction to sociology or anthropology, three credits, Introduction to Psychology, three credits. Lifespan Development or Developmental Psychology, three credits. Kinesiology, three credits. And Normal Psychology, three credits. And Statistics, three credits. So a grade of C or higher is required to transfer in those courses. Are letters of recommendation required or any essays would be required for this particular program? Letters of recommendations are required. Students can apply through OTCAS. Regarding the observation hours, while they're not required, they are recommended so that students can understand what occupational therapy is about and to get a feel for what area of practice that they want to enter. How about the OTD program? Uh, for the post-professional OTD, uh, you are required to have graduated from an accredited occupational therapy program and uh, have passed the MBCOT registration examination. And we do require uh, an essay for admission. Okay. How can I apply for FAFSA? I can get this one. I do have a lot of students that do um, ask about funding their uh, education at the graduate level. The good news is students can submit a FAFSA form if they're interested in using financial aid to help supplement the cost of their tuition. You would just want to complete the FAFSA form as a graduate student. All you would need is your past tax returns. And at this point, it would be based off of your information 
Uh, parent information is no, no longer required at the graduate level. Our school code to be added to that form is 003233. That will ensure that once you've been accepted and registered for classes, the Office of Student Financial Aid will be able to put a package together for you. At the graduate level, the majority of our coursework and programming is billed on a per credit rate. Are there any scholarships available for graduate students? I will also take this one. Uh, for graduate students, it is a little bit more limited as far as what is available to students as a bulk of the scholarships are earmarked for undergraduate students. However, there are several opportunities for graduate students to apply for scholarships through some outside um, search engines. We do assist students um, and we partner with University Scholarship, which is an opportunity and a database that students can uh, search for scholarships that might be applicable to them. FastWeb.com is also another reputable site that students can also search through um, to help find scholarships that might be available for them. How do graduate students pay for grad school who work full time and do not want to use just uh, federal loans? A lot of our students are in the boat and are working uh, either part time, potentially full time while they're moving through their graduate programs. Um, students uh, who potentially have an employer tuition reimbursement, the university does work with individuals that will be receiving tuition reimbursement. There's a form that students can complete each uh, semester. It does get returned to our Office of Student Financial Planning and will defer your payments until 60 days after uh, your courses have ended. We also do have payment plan options that students can set up through our Office of Student Financial Planning in addition to applying for financial aid. How long will it take to complete my program of study? So for the post-baccalaureate occupational therapy program, it takes two years, four months. It runs continuously through the summer and it takes seven semesters. We're very excited about this program and we have actually moved to field work towards the end of this curriculum. For the post-professional um, OTD, it takes approximately 18 months to complete uh, the program, it is designed for the working individuals. So uh, the classes are designed in mods. Uh, so by 18 months, you should have it completed. For the students enrolled in the entry level MSOT program, is there a bulk of the cohort that does hold either a full-time or part-time work? Yes, many of our students do work full time and they we set up our program so that classes are two to three days a week to give them the opportunity to build their work schedule around their courses. Are courses held on campus? How long is a typical class and are you in class all day? The classes are held on campus with the last year with, for this curriculum, students will be out on field work. So in that last year, they can move back home to do their field work opportunities, which provides them with possible opportunities for jobs that they can move back to where they live. And are you in classes all day? Sometimes, it depends on the course because we try to make sure that we have the courses scheduled two to three days, which means that you are in classes. Um, typical length of a class is about two and a half hours, but we make sure that you get that students get a break. And Dr. Shepherd, you wanna talk about the OTD? Yeah, so the post-professional OTD is completely online. Uh, we do ask that students who are not Alvernia grads come to campus one time only at, prior to the beginning of their uh, course for an orientation and um, uh, to the campus and to uh, the campus um, culture. Uh, so the, most of the classes will be asynchronous so that the students can complete the classes um, uh, at their leisure or during, during a time of day that is available to them. Is there housing available on campus for graduate students? We do offer housing for graduate students. 
So for students that are offered admissions to the university, they will check a box if they are interested in living on campus. We have three different apartment options that are about four to five uh, people in the apartments. And we have two townhouse options available on campus that house up to eight individuals. They are fully furnished, um, both the apartments and the townhomes. Um, and they have full laundry service available. Um, students that are interested in housing will work directly with me and I will connect you to the Office of Residence Life where you'll be able to secure your on-campus housing contract. We do have a mix of students that choose to live on campus. We have those that choose off campus and then we also have those that commute from home. So it is definitely a mix of students um, with regards to their preference for housing on campus. Are there activities on campus outside of my academic commitments? I'll let Ashley start with this. Yes, there are three OT clubs on campus. One of them is SODA. Um, anyone can join that one. It's just your general OT club. I was actually on the executive board, so you can even join the executive board as a graduate student. I had the opportunity to attend both state and national conferences through Alvernia, which was an amazing experience. Um, there's also COTAD, which is a diverse, diversity, equity, and inclusion club. Anyone can join that one. And then there's also PTE, which I wasn't a part of, but um, that you are invited to join the club. So there are three OT clubs on campus, and then there's other clubs if you wanted to join outside of just occupational therapy that are available to you. Are there... Uh, are there career services that assist uh, to get a job after graduation? We do have an Office of Career Services that does assist all Alvernia students, uh, whether it be for interviewing skills, resume assistance. We also have a platform known as Handshake, which will have open job opportunities that are posted. And throughout the academic year, there are several um, career fairs that are held here on campus. Um, the Career Service Office is a service that is available to all of our students for life. So as an alumni, as you're out there working and you're building your resume and you're going for that next uh, career bump, you if it's just merely just having somebody look over your resume, that will be a service as an Alvernia alum that you will be able to use here at the university. And Kelly, I also wanted to add that as department chair, I have a lot of, I've received a lot of phone calls from employers that will reach out to me and say they just want to hire Alvernia graduates. So we're starting to build a database of students to give us, um, you know, if they want to give us their personal emails before they graduate, then I can send them opportunities. So we're where the word is getting out there and I have more and more people saying they just want to um, see if they can hire an Alvernia graduate. And for the OTD, the post-professional, it's set up so that students who are out there working as occupational therapists can possibly get their employers to reimburse part of their tuition. So we're very excited about that. We currently do have an alumni database as well that we use just from like our OT department. So whenever we get those emails from Dr. Bentz or anyone else, we always send them out to all of the contacts that we have. So I would say we get a few a month that get sent out and you can look for different job opportunities if needed. Oh, that's wonderful. Good news. I will be happy to share that with everybody along the way. How is the diversity and inclusion at Alvernia University? So for the diversity and inclusion, we have statements in our syllabi that the OT department faculty have to do training and have to include um, presentations and lectures that discuss how occupational therapy supports diversity and inclusion. And also our COTAD student group is also active with talking about um, how to support that diversity and inclusion as an active occupational therapist. So let me, you know, have Ashley Martins discuss her experience with that. Guys, so, um, well, I talked that SODA kind of was the general OT club. COTAD focused more so on diversity, equity, and inclusion. So they'd have a lot of cool meetings and discussions and guest lectures discussing um, 
serving different types of populations and um, bringing um, various people from cultures in. So definitely um, you have a broad mix of people in your group. It's everyone looks different, has a story to tell, and it's been amazing to be a part of such a diverse group of people. We've learned a lot from each other. Alberta University as a whole also has many different activities and clubs um, that represent all students on campus. Um, just a few would be our Allied Club, our Black Student Union, our Multicultural Club. We've got a JAG Council for our staff and faculty. So there's a lot of different opportunities to be able to get involved, broaden our horizons, and learn from one another here at the university. And Kelly, I also wanted to add that I teach yoga and Dr. Allison Bula also teach yoga in the occupational therapy department. And we have, we have provided yoga sessions where we've gathered students um, who have reached out to us to provide sort of a bonding experience with the Black Student Union, with COTAD, with Active Minds. And we're gonna continue to do that throughout the year. They've reached out again to provide more opportunities so that we can do partner yoga and just learn from each other. Like Ashley said that, um, you know, as classmates, they they grow together and learn together, and we do that. We we do that through activities, in, including yoga sessions and meditation. Wonderful. So, one of the next questions um, that we do get oftentimes would be: Are clearances required to apply for admissions? So, for the clearances, there's questions on there that ask if. You've, there's been a history, any kind of criminal background history that will show up. So that question has to be answered. And at this time, there's, you know, clearance is not required at this time, but for field work, clearances are required for all field work experiences, level one and level two. Can you talk about field work experience? So I'll start first with the <laughs> level one experience. Um, you have three level one clinical experiences. So this is more so a once a week, twice if you can make it possible. Uh, we very much try to base it around where you're coming from. So if you're living on campus, we try to look for ones that are close to campus. If you commute from New Jersey, we'll try to find ones closer to your home commute there. These clinical experiences are for up to a total of 40 hours within the semester. So you have the entire semester to complete it. And we typically start those experiences within the first two to three weeks of your semester. So you should have plenty of time to complete it prior to the end of the semester, but we like to leave a little gap at the end for weather, for illnesses, whatever may arise. Um, these are typically completed on one of the days that you do not have classes. We do have some clinical experiences that can be kind of immersed with your classroom day. Those are more so ones that are here on campus. Otherwise, we ask that you complete them on your off day. So when you're, you don't have classes on that date. We also try to give you a wide variety. So we try to include pediatrics, mental health, physical disability, some ortho experience in there. We really want you to experience everything that OT can do so that you don't have your mind set on one specific thing. I always tell people that I came in with dead set on working with pediatrics until I had my pediatrics field work. And I've been working with geriatrics ever since. So I really do think that it's beneficial for the student to go outside of their comfort zone and really experience everything that we're capable of doing. And just piggybacking off of that. Um, so as as far as what Amanda was saying with the variety of placements, it is actually a requirement from ACOTE, which is our accreditation standards, that you do need to have placements in three different settings. And it is to give you that experience and to really learn what you're interested in and just to see what's out there. It also helps for your boards when you have to make sure that you're able to pass an exam to become a general practitioner before you're going out into the field. Um, I oversee our level two placements. So this is what Dr. Bence was talking about before, the year is going to be your last year. You're able to return home for it. It is two full-time, three-month placements. So it's 12 weeks long, and you have two of them. 
And for that, during that time, we do not recommend that you have a job at that point because it really does take a full-time amount of work. So usually anywhere between 35 to 45 hours, you will be working each week. And that is just with your placement and with your supervisor. Besides that, you might have time outside of that that you need to do some type of planning for your sessions or documentation um, or other things that may be inquired, including driving. We do have you drive up to an hour from your placement. Um, as far as from your, when you get to figure out what you would like to do, we do have a preferred list. You are able to give us any placement that you are interested in. Hopefully we are able to get it for you and we try our best, but we do ask for a preferred list that includes at least 10 placement options. And then we reach out to those and we see which ones we are able to figure out will fit into your schedule and will really give you the best benefit to again, passing those boards and becoming a skilled practitioner. So those two also need to be in two different settings. Um, so whether it's a pediatric placement in a hospital setting or a skilled nursing setting and a mental health setting. So we do look for a variety of placements there too, so that we can really make you well-rounded by the time of graduation. Um, as far as the post-professional doctorate, we don't have any level or fieldwork experiences during that that are required, um, but I would like to actually ask Ashley to speak to her placements since she already completed her uh, both level one and level two experiences. Yes, so I had three level one placements. My first one was a virtual telehealth experience and it was uh, interprofessional with athletic training, physical therapy. So that was really important to be able to work in co intercollaboratively with different professions and different areas of um, allied health. And then my second one was rock steady boxing with the Parkinson's population. I actually love that level one field work so much that I stayed on as a volunteer for an extra year after that because I loved working in that with that population in that area. And then my third one was pediatrics, um, working with three to five year olds. And then it, they do ask you what your preferred uh, field work placements are. And if you're unsure, they're amazing. You're able to set up meetings with them and talk to them prior. Um, it's not kind of like you're on your own and thrown into it. They're, this faculty is amazing. Um, part of the reason I love Alvernia so much and will always advocate for our programs because I've always felt supported. You're not just a number, you're a name. You're, they care about you. Um, so I've had meetings with them. So my first level uh, level two field work was in an inpatient rehab facility, particularly with the spinal cord injury population and I learned a lot. It was really cool to be able to apply what you learned in your classes to these level two settings. And my professors were always available for questions. I've sent out emails to some of them and asked them for help along my field works and they've I've always been supported and they've always helped me out. And then my level two field work actually I'm originally from New Jersey, but the school's in Pennsylvania. So I asked if I could go to Florida and they set it up and made it possible for me. So I was able to spend some time with my grandparents down there and it was a outpatient rehab facility and I ended up loving it. I actually got a job offer for once I graduate from there. So amazing level one and two fieldwork experiences and an amazing OT faculty here at the school. That is Thank awesome. you, Ashley. The students, you're, you're amazing too. You're amazing. Um, and to piggyback on what Ashley said, she's the, the job offers are being um, extended to our students before they graduate in, in both tracks. And the fieldwork supervisors have reached out to me and emailed me and saying that their Alvernia student was the best student they have ever had. And these are supervisors who've been in the field 15, 20 years because our students, um, are very tech savvy. They can go out and update systems of small clinics that are using paper pencil um, documentation. So our students come out and they make things better and they grow the organization. So we're very proud of them. That's amazing. What is the typical day of an OT student at Alvernia University? This might Ashley? be too, Ashley. <laughs> Ashley, you're on. Okay, sorry, <laughs> I was finding the unmute button, but uh, I guess it really depends on what 
semester you're in, but a lot of the classes are like you'll have class one, two, three days a week in person, or I guess it depends what, what semester you're in. But I guess for me, a typical day would be a lot of the OT classes are in a certain building that has a coffee right next to it. So I always stop and get some Starbucks coffee <laughs> before class to get me through. Um, and a typical OT day, I guess you get there, you park. I usually get coffee. Some people bring stuff with them. It's a long day. Usually it's like a nine to four, nine to five. It really depends on what your schedule is. So a lot of us bring like a packed lunch from home. Um, there's also food to buy on campus, but to each their own. And you have classes. A lot of the classes I loved when we were able to have, when you have like your peds, you have your peds lab. When you have your adults, you have your adults lab. Jerry, you have the lab. So I love that component to be able to not just learn the like content of the course, be, be able to practice the actual real life skills on either your classmates or even with your professors. Um, so it's a class, a lot of um, breaks in between. So a lot of like in those breaks you would eat, if there's anybody you need to meet with professor wise on campus, you can meet with them and stop by their office or make an appointment. Um, but yeah, my typical day in when I'm in class is it's a lot of class throughout the day, but you get breaks to eat, uh, do some start homework early, stuff like that. And always coffee, coffee and food. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and to add what and to add what Ashley was saying is that I had a student recently share that he drove he drives almost three hours to Alvernia, and it's because he likes the in person experience where so many programs are online for a master's degree when they're learning to to try to be occupational therapist. So the the, the almost three hour drive he doesn't mind because he the the in person experience is worth it. And I really, and I also want to add that we are very fortunate to have two fieldwork coordinators who are amazing, um, Professor Stelianos and Dr. Swope. They are responsive. Um, they have answers to questions before uh, I even I even ask them. And um, Dr. Shrepfer, she's she's also a traveler. She comes from a distance, but she's here all the time. So we we are very fortunate to have very caring faculty and wonderful students. What is the starting average salary for an OT grad? So for an OT grad starting salary, it has ranged. It's it's all over. It starts anywhere from 60,000 to 77,000. It depends on where you go in the United States. There is a website called otsalary.com where um, occupational therapists from all over the United States answer a survey in real time. So that's where students can see how much um, occupational therapists are making in their state. What is the difference in career opportunities for an individual who has an MSOT degree versus an OTD degree? Dr. Shrepford, do you wanna take that? Yes, so I think uh, as an entry level, hold on. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so I think as an entry level uh, occupational therapist, when you're first starting, um, there is not a big difference at the entry level. So at, at the very beginning of your career. However, for career development uh, and to advance your career, the uh, uh, post-professional OTD or an advanced degree is beneficial um, because it gives you the extra skills you need in order to move up the, the clinical ladder or to move into academia. So I think if, you know, just the generalist OT at the very beginning of their career, the master's degree is a great starting point. But if you have an interest in really advancing to higher levels, that an advanced degree would be beneficial. And the OT degree, uh, the OT degree, um, OTD degree focuses on research. So you go deeper into mm -hmm. the research aspect of it and a doctorate doctoral degree is is recommended and required in many places to teach 
So as far as I get questions about what's the salary difference between someone who has a master's degree and a doctorate degree, the salary difference is minimal per hour. It's either $1 or $2 an hour difference. So what employers look for is, are you an occupational therapist and what is your experience? Why Alvernia University? I'm gonna have Ashley respond as, as a student who chose Alvernia. Because the school's amazing and this program's amazing. Um, it's a smaller school. So like, for example, my entry level MSOT program, there's 18 of us. So we've been through it. We all grew together, learned together and we all kind of went through it together. So it was a close, tight knit group. Um, you have professors that really, really care about you. I did my undergrad somewhere else and I hated the way I felt at that school. I felt like a number more so than a person, but at Alvernia, I walk around and every professor knows my name and says hello to me in the hallway. So um, I feel very supported as an occupational therapy student. I know that when I graduate soon that I'll still be able to reach out to my OT professors here. And if I have any questions or need help with anything, I know that they're only an email or phone call away. They, they, I think because the professors care so much and it's a, the curriculum's great. I feel like I've learned everything I've needed to know when I went off to my level two field works. It's always scary and intimidating, but I felt prepared and I was prepared to, when you're on your level two field work, it's as if you were a new grad kind of, by the time you're done with your level two field work, you're acting as a new grad, all the patients are yours, um, you're treating everybody. So, and I did it. So whether you feel ready or not, they do really do a good job at preparing you to be uh, an OT in whatever setting it is that you're interested in. So amazing school, amazing professors. Um, I love the clubs on campus. Like I said, they gave me the opportunity to go to the um, state and national conferences. I've gone to two of the eight OTA conferences, uh, courtesy of the school. And it's it's completely impacted my life and made such a difference. And I think I'll be a better OT for it one day, not only because of the clubs on campus, but the professors and the culture around the campus and even your other professors that you'll have um, at Alverney are just, everyone's just so kind and it's amazing. I love it. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what else to say. I love your school. I, just, I don't want to say Ashley is amazing. <laughs> we're, very, we're, we're very excited to have her as a cheerleader because um, she really has helped a lot of our students also and supported them. And, you know, not only do the faculty support the students, the students support each other. And someone like Ashley is, you know, for an example, here she is helping us out, sharing her experiences. And um, she also helped us kickstart our, our Alvernia OT pinning ceremony. <laughs> you know, Ashley was a cheerleader to help kick off our first OT pinning ceremony. And if you Google on YouTube, Alvernia OT pinning ceremony, there is a video that a student shared that I didn't know her, what her story was until that day when she talked about how she was at a university before Alvernia told her that she would not become an occupational therapist, that she did not have what it took to be an OT. Not only did the student graduate from Alvernia, she got a job right away after she graduated and she is a successful occupational therapist. So that's an amazing story that she shared with us. I just wanted to also add, I think a lot of us here on uh, this session are alumni from Alvernia. I myself am a two-time alum and it seems like we all kind of love it and stick around here at the university, which is really a really nice thing. Um, the campus is absolutely gorgeous and it is made up of a more amazing faculty and staff and students. And there's just a cohesive ability to work in our department with um, different offices. And it's just a really special place. And I think that is something that we just keep hearing um, from all of our individuals here at the campus. So it's always a good thing when we stick around. And then finally, um, if you do have questions and you're interested in learning more about our programs, 
please connect directly with me. I will be your first contact um, throughout the admissions process. I want to hear from you. I want to get your answers. Um, if I myself don't know them, I will make sure I do connect you with the correct individuals on campus um, to get those answers to your questions. I have both my email and my phone number. Um, so please do not hesitate. We look forward to hearing from you and we cannot wait for you to apply for this next upcoming academic year. Yes, thank you. Thank you students and families for joining us. We are available to talk at any time, 24-7. Um, so please email me also if you have any questions, elizabeth.bents at alvernia.edu. I want to thank everyone for joining us today and um, we look forward to seeing you. Thanks everybody. Bye.